hello hello grade 12 in today's lesson we're gonna be looking at chemical equilibrium question 6 and then it goes initially 6.8 gram pure carbon dioxide co2 is reacted with carbon in a cell container of volume 3 dm cube the reaction reaches equilibrium at temperature t according to the following balanced equation then 6.1 says define the term chemical equilibrium so let's run quickly to that says chemical equilibrium is a dynamic equilibrium where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction 6.2 it says at equilibrium it is found that the concentration of the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide is 0 0.05 mole dm cube then 6.2.1 says calculate the equilibrium constant kc for this reaction at temperature t right so now before we can calculate the kc let's first interact with um what we have here the balanced equation so we can say that the carbon is in solid state the carbon dioxide in gaseous state and carbon monoxide in gaseous state remember with concentration concentration applies to molecules that are in gaseous state or in aqua state right so that means in order for our kc calculation we won't be including the carbon because remember to calculate kc we simply use the concentration of the product and concentration of reactants now we say concentration does not apply to solid molecules so that means we won't be using the concentration of the carbon so that means we won't be including it in calculations so the ones will be using its carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide so note also that um, for kc we only need molecules that are in aqueous and in gaseous state the ones that are in liquid and solid we do not use them then okay now to calculate we have this rice diagram here which is the ratio initial number of moles change in number of moles equilibrium number of moles and then lastly the concentration at equilibrium right so now we'll be using this as the carbon dioxide block co2 then it's in gaseous state and then this one is the carbon monoxide block now what is the ratio according to our according to our balanced equation you can see that the ratio of this one will be one and the ratio here is two so the ratio is one is two two so based on our coefficients then the initial number of moles remember from the statement we are given that the mass of carbon dioxide is 60.8 gram so we do not have the initial number of moles but we are given the initial mass of the carbon dioxide now we can use this mass to calculate the number of moles remember we have the formula n is equals to small m over big m then what is our small m is that 60.8 and then divided by um, what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide from our periodic table know that carbon is 12 and then oxygen is 16 so 16 times 2 then when we do all this it's gonna give us 44 grams per mole and then we can just plug it in here right so calculating that one will have 1.382 and then we'll just substitute it here 1.382 but what else are we given from the statement we are given that at equilibrium the concentration of carbon dioxide is 0 0.05 moles so where are we gonna put that one here concentration remember that one is concentration not the number of moles now we can use this concentration to actually find the number of moles at equilibrium so we'll go c is equals to n over v then what is the concentration it's 0 0.054 and then number of moles then remember the volume we've been told there that the volume is 3 dm cube right so let's substitute our 3 here then when we cross multiply here the number of moles of the carbon dioxide at equilibrium will be 0 0.162 mole. right so we'll put our 0 one six two here 
That means now that we have equilibrium number of moles and initial number of moles, we can now find the difference in change. Remember, change is difference. So we take this one and uh, subtract that one. We will have 1.22. So I like to indicate a negative here to show that the reactants, as the, as the reaction is proceeding, the reactants are being used up, right? So now when you even take the initial number of moles, subtract by the number of moles in change, you will find the number of moles at equilibrium. But then note that for the carbon monoxide, the statement says the carbon dioxide is sealed, it is reacted with carbon, uh, with carbon and then it is sealed, right? So if they say it is sealed, that means initially we don't have any product. So for products initially, we'll just put zero here. Then what is the change? For change, now note, for change, that's where you will use the ratio. The change relates to the ratio. So only, this is the only time where you'll be using the ratio for the change block, right? Or for the um, changed, change row, right? So now applying our ratio, we have um, the ratio of carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide is 1 is to 2. And then we are given that carbon, mon carbon dioxide at um, the change in, in the number of moles of carbon dioxide is 1.22. Then we want the change in the number of moles of carbon monoxide. So we'll have an X here. Now, in order to calculate the X, you just cross multiply this 1.22 multiply by 2. That's 2.44, right? So basically, that means this is um, this requires two parts um, of this in order for, for it to react, right? So two point, so here we have 2.44, must include it here, change. Then we know as the reaction is proceeding, what is happening to the product? The products are being formed, so they're being added up. So I like to indicate that positive there. It is not necessary though, but then it's just to make me remember. Then zero, zero plus 2.44, then we'll get the number of moles at equilibrium. That's 2.44. Right. Then now to calculate the concentration, we will now use the formula. C is equals to N over V. And then remember, we now have the number of moles. So that's 2.44. Then divide that by 3, which is the volume. The concentration will now be. 0.813 mole per dm cube. So let's include it here. 0.813, right? So now at this time, at this point, we are now good to go um, to calculate the Kc. So we have the concentration of the product and then we have the concentration of the reactant. So we'll say concentration of carbon monoxide, but then remember the ratio now tends to a superscript, or as you'd like to call it, an exponent. Then we have concentration of carbon dioxide as the reactant. Then it's just a matter of now substituting our concentrations. Note that when I'm substituting the concentrations now, I'm using the round brackets, right? So square brackets for concentration. So square bracket means concentration. So you don't have to use square brackets when you are now substituting the numbers. So this is 0 0.054. Then if you punch all that in your calculator, you will have 12.24. And that becomes your KC. Okay, so now for 6.2.2, it says calculate the minimum mass of carbon that must be present in the container to obtain this equilibrium. So now we know in order to calculate the mass of carbon, we have to make use of our ratios. So we can go back to our table and then remember ratios only apply on the change block, right? So this change here will be using the number of moles of carbon dioxide here, which is 1.22. Since we can see that the ratio here 
if we refer to if we refer to our balanced equation we can see that the ratio of carbon is equal to the ratio of carbon dioxide right so we can say that if the ratios are equal whatever number of moles that we have for carbon dioxide on the change block will be the same as the one in carbon right so making use of that one will say let's compare number of moles for carbon dioxide with the number of moles in carbon so the ratio is one is to one what was what was the number of moles of carbon dioxide on the change block it's 1.22 and then that means the ratios are equal this is also 1.22 mole right so therefore the number of moles of carbon is 1.22 mole now we can use this one to calculate the mass so for mass we'll say n is equal to m over big m right then what is the number of mole that's 1.22 then we are looking for the mass but what is the molar mass of carbon from the periodic table the, the, the atomic mass is 12 so that's the molar mass then cross multiply this we will have 1.22 multiplied by 12 14.64 grams awesome then in 6.3 says how will each of the following changes affect the amount of carbon monoxide at equilibrium choose from increases decreases or remain the same now in 6.3.1 they're saying more carbon is added to the container right so what is the answer for that one drum roll <laughs> remains the same because concentration only applies to gaseous moles and aqueous moles so as you can see here your carbon is in solid state then this one when they see what will happen how will it affect the amount of carbon monoxide they are speaking in reference to what the concentration so what will happen to the concentration of carbon monoxide since we are only increasing the what the amount of carbon which is in solid state then nothing will happen it will remain the same because remember concentration only applies to gaseous moles or aquas right so you just have to note that then in 6.3.2 it says the pressure is increased by reducing the volume of the container at constant temperature use the chartless principle to explain the answer so now we are told that the pressure is increased by reducing the volume so if you refer back to the notes you will remember that i said pressure and volume are inversely proportional so an increase in pressure indicates a decrease in volume so now we must use the chartless principle to explain the answer now we say an increase in pressure which is a decrease in volume favors the reaction with less number of gas moles right so going back here we can see that um considering this this will be one because we won't be taking the number of moles of this one remember pressure again applies to gases only right applies to gases only so we'll be taking the coefficient of this gas here and taking the coefficient of this gas now an increase in pressure favors the side with less number of gas moles an increase in pressure favors the reaction with less number of gas moles therefore the reverse reaction has the less number of gas moles as indicated here you can see that the reverse reaction which is the reactant side has less number of gas moles right which is a smaller coefficient therefore reverse reaction will be favored and the concentration of carbon monoxide will decrease why because in favoring the reverse reaction we are actually promoting the using up of product to form the reactants so in supporting the reverse re a reaction we'll be using up the carbon monoxide in order to form back the reactants so um in that way the carbon monoxide will decrease the concentration of carbon monoxide will decrease then um 6.4 it says the table below 
shows the percentages of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in the container at different temperatures. Now 6.4.1 says is the reaction exothermic and or, or endothermic refer to the data in the table and explain the answer. Now from this we can see that as we increase the temperature what happens to the percentage yield of the carbon monoxide which is actually the product we can see that it is actually increasing right so we can see that um the increase in temperature is actually favoring uh, the 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 making up of this product meaning it is favoring the forward reaction so how do we explain i'll say the answer is endothermic reaction why because when the temperature is increased the percentage yield of carbon monoxide increases then that means the forward reaction is favored remember forward reaction promotes the making up of products so if the percentage yield of carbon monoxide increases which is the product that means the forward reaction has been favored now we can conclude that an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction which is why we say the forward reaction is actually endothermic Okay, so um, 6.4.2 says use the information in the table to determine temperature T. Show clearly how you arrived at the answer. So now we can see that here we are given the temperatures, um, the percentage yield of carbon dioxide and the percentage yield of carbon monoxide. That means in order to find um, temperature T, we can just use the fact that we are given this percentage yield here. And then try to calculate calculate our own percentage yield and see if it will, it will correspond to one of these values so if it corresponds to one value let's say maybe we calculate we find that the answer is this one now if we relate it to the temperature that means the temperature will be 1.2 so the percentage yield that we'll find must uh, they must be correspondent to the temperature that we are looking for so okay to calculate the percentage yield we can just go back here right so remember we have our concentrations here the concentration of carbon dioxide and the concentration of carbon monoxide so now let's calculate the total concentration so we'll say c total is equals to the concentration of the carbon dioxide which was 0. 0 0.054 plus the concentration of the carbon monoxide which is 0 0.813 and then adding those we'll get 0 0.867 mole per dm cube right so in order to calculate the percentage yield let's say percentage yield of carbon monoxide can say what is the concentration of carbon monoxide it is this one so we'll say 0 0.813 0 .8 over the total it's 0 0.867 multiplied by 100. Then the value that we get for this one is 93.77 right so if we have 93.77 percent let's check now the 93.77 percent is here it corresponds to which which temperature so 827 so what is the temperature in other words we can then conclude that temperature t is equals to 827 is it in degrees degrees celsius nice